to the channel. I have literally just filmed this and then the memory card was full. So take number three on this. So first video of 2018. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and a wonderful New Year's if you are the type of person that celebrates it. Uh, mine was awesome, really chilled out and just trying to get back into the swing of things now. It's 3rd of January. So let's see what 2018 brings. I um, really wanted to do a video on approaching strangers and photographing them. Uh, it's one of the ones that I wanted to do last year, but then I thought, you know what, let's just start with it in 2018. So uh, when I first started out, this one, uh, sort of personal experience, struggled quite a lot with approaching people, not gonna lie. I've worked in retail before, I've worked in sort of face-to-face -face, uh, positions where I speak to people, but when it came to uh, photographing people or photographing strangers, really struggled with just approaching them and just being like, hey, can I get a photograph of you? Um, when you're first starting out as well, I think intermediary, uh, it's you're still practicing, so you kind of like get into the learning camera and all that jazz. So when it comes to approaching people, it might put you off a little bit. But wanted to say, do not let it put you off because ninety eight percent of the time, people are super stoked that you want to approach them and take pictures of them because. Maybe they've never had a photograph taken of them. Uh, it's great for travel as well. One of the things that I would recommend is having a photo release. So if you do plan to uh, photograph street photography or just shooting portraits, um, you know, in your local city or town or whatever, uh, just to practice, or if you do want to sell them onto agencies and things like that, have a photo release with you. Uh, look into that. Get something created and keep it on you at all times because you never know when you might find. An amazing face to photograph. Um, I'm going to take you guys back to India. So a few years ago, I took a trip with my mom, sister, and niece, and we literally just road tripped um, around Rajasthan area. Uh, for those of you guys who may have visited, you'll know what I mean when I say it's absolutely beautiful in terms of the colours. The culture is very different. Um, there's a lot of like temples. There's a lot of like fashion. Uh, very much, you know, very colourful and vibrant, which I really love about India. Um, and one of the things that I did then was, in fact, that's one of the what I think it's one of the first times that I really started kind of photographing strangers, and I use the word strangers very lightly. Um, and we had a bit of a language barrier because although I understand Hindi and Punjabi which is sort of like the local languages in certain parts of India. Um, I don't speak it, so thankfully I had my mum on board, so she was able to help communicate a little bit. Um, but yeah, we went to... So I'm going to loop those photos in on this video as well, so you guys can have a look. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about each one, um, as much as I can kind of gather from that sort of trip. Um, and... I shot them all on the Canon 5D Mark II and I've got um, a couple of shots which were taken on Sigma 17, sorry, 27, can't speak, Sigma 24cm and Canon 50mm 1.4, which is the one that I'm filming on. Um, I've got a couple of tips for you guys as well, so hopefully it will help you guys approach strangers and take the portraits that you might want to, you know, it happens a lot with photographers, you might be walking down the road, you'll see someone that's really got beautiful features, got gorgeous eyes or just something about them and you want to photograph it and so these tips will hopefully help. One of the first things I would say to do is do not be afraid of approaching people, it is a confidence thing but 98% of people as I say, they're totally happy with you taking photos. Now obviously if you're going to come across in like a really creepy way, that's probably not going to go down well. But one of the things that really works well, and it works well for me, uh, I do it a lot, like sort of at festivals and stuff, is uh, keep contact cards on you or business cards. So you're not just a random person that's taking a photo, you're representing yourself. And what you can do is to assure the other person or the subject that you're taking pictures of is here's a contact card, feel free to drop me an email or give me a call and what I'll do is I'll send you a copy of the pictures. So they have got copies of the pictures there. Um, it's a great way of so it's a great way of marketing that as well because if you send them a picture, um, they might share it to their Facebook or social media, whatever it is that they do, um, and they can link back to your website or your uh, social media channels. And if not, that's totally fine. You've taken a picture of someone, you've got like great portraiture work out of it, and they've just got an amazing photograph, hopefully. So. 
That's my first tip, just keep contact cards with you. The second thing is don't be afraid to use, so if you're more of a fan of say um, Polaroid or Lomo cameras, um, things like that, don't be afraid to use them instead because it actually creates a different relationship between the photographer and the um, subject. Uh, a lot of people don't have, they don't get as intimidated by sort of like the film cameras as much as they do with SLRs. Um, so if you do, if you are a fan of film photography, definitely just take your film cameras instead. I think the dog's whimpering. Not sure, might be just hearing things. Uh, so yeah, use your film cameras if you wanted to instead of SLRs. If you are using an SLR, try not to use something that's got like a huge lens. Like if you're doing street photography, um, take a 50mm with you or just something small and compact. So if you are shooting someone quite close up, they don't feel as intimidated uh, compared to like a 70 to 200, for example. Uh, the third thing is, I would say, um, Don't be afraid to approach and just have an icebreaker. So if they've got nice shoes on or they've got some like nice outfit on, uh, just be like, oh, I really love your top, blah, 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 blah. Get into a conversation with them and then just say, oh, okay, is it okay, is it okay to take a photograph of you? Here's my contact card. Uh, feel free to drop me a line or email or whatever. Uh, I'll send you a copy and it's literally just for personal use. Again, if you are planning on... Um, share it to agencies and whatnot, you'll need a photo release. So at that point, if you do think you might wanna distribute elsewhere, get the photo release signed and um, you'll be right on that one. Uh, my fourth tip would be, if you shoot it in street style, take the photos first and then approach the subject because then you've already got the photos. Um, if you are a photographer that doesn't mind showing the raw images uh, on the camera, um, then by all means do that so that they know the photo that you've taken. And then uh, again, contact cards if they do want a copy. As I said before, you can send it over. Um, and usually when you're taking a picture already, they're totally fine about it. They just want to see it and they might want a copy for themselves. Like 98% of the time, people just love having photos taken. Um, and my fifth one would be, just don't be afraid. Like, you know, people are people and we all sort of crave human interaction at the end of the day. And um, we all want to, even in this digital age where we're using things like YouTube, Instagram, social media, um, it's always refreshing, which is a really weird thing to say. It's always amazing to just kind of connect with people face-to-face -face level um, and just kind of have that. So. On that note, I'm going to take you through a couple of the pictures that I shot back in India of strangers on the streets of India, basically. So, as I say, um, these were literally just on the fly and it was shot within 20 seconds. Uh, each shot was you literally just fire um, four or five shots or whatever um, and just work with the best ones that you got. So, the first one was taken in Mount Abu, um, amazing place. And I remember the little cafe that we went to, it's so chilled out. They were playing like Bob Marley, had like just the coolest vibe ever. Uh, I forget the name of it right now, it's on my Facebook. Um, can't remember. But this guy, and again with the language barrier, not too sure about him and his story, but he was working, he looks like an elderly guy. One of the things that really attracted me to him was um, his facial features were beautiful and his eyes were absolutely amazing. Um, and his attire was very traditional with the white clothing and like a turban type thing. And so he was sat on his cart um, and what he, his daily sort of job was basically carting up the people um, to the sort of central point on the mountain because um, there was like a not a deck area, but like a seating area with, where you can watch sunrise and sunset. So he would take maybe, you know, like kids or the less able um, all the way up to the central viewing point. Um, and I really loved about it. He seemed so happy and just genuine. And it really, I just really love stuff like that. Um, the second one is we stopped off at quite a few temples sort of in uh, during the road trip. So. Two of these were taken um, by one of the temples. Now, one of the guys was just sat there, again, it was very much his facial, uh, sort of like his features and his clothing that um, really kind of made me think, oh, I'll make a great portrait. Um, 
And so he was just sat there and he's just kind of, as I was taking pictures, he just kind of put, kind of put his hand out, um, which I thought was quite emotive in my opinion. Um, that's this picture here. The third one was, I'm trying to think of these because I don't have them in front of me right now. The third one would have been, there was like a guru uh, of a traditional type of, uh, I don't know what the right term is, but he was again by the temple and he had like the orange sort of uh, traditional gear on and he was chanting the, I guess the hymns, um, the traditional hymns um, and I just really loved again his attire and the colours were just uh, you know absolutely amazing. One of the things I must say it was blazing hot like I was drinking ice cold water guys and I could not feel it hit my stomach that's how hot it was and these guys just sat outside in this intense heat and I just thought oh my goodness one I love the heat but two it was scorching and I was like, how do you do this? Just sit and because the temples are made from marble, it just, oh, guys, honestly, I can't even put it into words. Other one was, so the next one we headed on out, it was nearby to Mount Abu, but uh, there was like a slum area, so um, it was quite a contrast to like the mountainous area, but you know, these guys are like some of the happiest people that I'd met. Granted, I didn't get into a conversation with them and so forth, but the spirit and the energy that they had was really amazing even though they had like literally nothing. Uh, the houses were made of like basically waste um, and they ended up just giving like food and stuff to them like basically to the kids and stuff um, and so we took the portraits of these guys, the kids and the parents um, and the kids just had like such an energy about them regardless of the situation that they're currently in, well at that time. Um, who knows what happened to them. One of the things that I really would have liked to have been able to do is maybe take a portable print, portable printer with me and kind of maybe print off the pictures and give them to them. Um, because who knows, like some people just don't have any pictures of themselves, uh, especially in those situations. So um, maybe in the future, maybe on the next next trip, who knows. Um, that was that one. Um, and... Also, we met a lady with a kid in her hand. So she had the traditional, I can't think of the name right now, but it's basically around the neck and the arms. They wear sort of like the, it's not bangles, but it's like shaped bangles. Um, but I can't think of the right term for it right now. In Rajasthan area in India. I absolutely love just like the traditional game. And so it was great to be able to catch that. Really sorry this time out. I'm not too sure why. Um, and that was pretty much the last set of shots if I remember right. So as I said, I've looked them in so you guys can take a look. If you guys have got any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down below. Most of all, what I'd like to say is just have the confidence and the faith in yourself just to approach your subject. Whether it's a wedding that you're at or whether it's a uh, street shoot or whether it is bands and artists that you want to work with, whether it is, or publications, things like that. So the confidence and the faith to be able to just connect with people. Um, and the first time is always the worst time. The worst. Yeah, the worst. And then from there, guys, it really does get easier um, as your confidence grows with it. So I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you guys have taken something away from this video. As I say, come and say hi over on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I've left the handle on this video throughout so you guys can connect with me. Um, so it's great to connect with you guys. Thanks so much for the questions um, and the comments that you do leave and DM me on Instagram. It's really nice to kind of be a bit more human with those things. Um, and I'm going to wrap it up there. Yes. Leave a comment down below if you have any and... Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on as well to be alerted for new videos. And I will be back real soon with a new video. Um, and I'll see you guys then. Thanks for tuning in. Here's to 2018. Bye for now.